What's up, guys? Welcome to the podcast today. Uh, with this Today's podcast will probably be a little bit of a shorter one, uh, unless Eugene and I go off on tangents, which we typically do to some degree. Um, but the idea that we're going to get into in this podcast today is something I shared in some videos and emails recently, if you're on the Chew Crew list uh, or if you watch a YouTube channel and stuff like that. And most of the people that watched the the videos or read the emails, they you know sort of nodded their heads and said, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But I also got some feedback from people where I could tell it kind of ruffled their feathers a little bit and they thought maybe I was making a jab at certain people. And I assure you that the point of sharing the idea that I'm going to share with you today is not to make a jab at you. Um, and again, if you've heard this tip already, great. If you, We're going to go a little bit deeper. If you haven't, because this is the only place you consume the information I put out is the podcast. That's great. Then it'll be new to you. Uh, but either way, the whole point of sharing this idea with you is that a lot of messages that I get on the internet are they surround, there's a sort of circle around the idea of how do I get better? How do I get better at jujitsu? How do I get good? Right. Most people want to be good. Most people want to walk into the gym and they want to be pretty good. Most of us understand we're not going to be the best person in the room or the best person ever. We understand this, right? But we, we still want to be good and we want to be the best that we can be. And so this is a really important rule for your training. If you want to do that, if you want to make, if you want to be the best that you can be, this is going to be a big, vital, important part about it. Um, this is something that all of my best students, this is a trait or an idea a strategy that they all share in common, whether they know it or not. All of my friends that are really good grapplers, some of which include like world champions and very high level competitors, they do this. My mentors and some of my influences in business and everything else in life, they do this, right? Like one of my mentors, he, do, he does this about his life in every aspect, right? And um, it's very important. So again, take it for what you will. The, the point is not to ruffle feathers or be provocative. I'm not that kind of person. The idea is to try to give you some ideas and tools to be useful um, so that this way you can make the most of your training and everything else. So with that said, let's jump into this podcast and, uh, hopefully this helps you guys as always. Thanks to our sponsors for helping make this podcast happen. Charles Webb is a CBD company that is third party tested and it's jujitsu approved. I've been using it for, gosh, it's going on like three years now. And I really like the product. Um, again, for you guys, if you don't know how things work on the podcast, basically the way that a sponsor becomes or the way a product becomes gets on the podcast, if they want to sponsor it, is we first have to try it. We have to like dig into it. We have to talk to the people. We've got, we got the whole thing and it, it's a bit of a process. And, you know, again, I've used their products. I really like them. And so I like sharing them with you. And again, if you've never used CBD, I know sometimes you might hear people talk about it. And sometimes it even sounds like maybe snake oil or too good to be true type of product, uh, which is what I thought originally. But again, once you try it, you may see why people talk about it. So I encourage you to um, try it out. Try it out for yourself. Go to their website at charlottesweb.com, the promo code to save a little bit of money and support the podcast both is jujitsu 20 it'll get you 20 percent off the order and give it a try again i would encourage you to try one of the tinctures they're pretty economical um very easy very small you can just take a little dropper and then you do it i like doing it at night i use cbd about 30 minutes before i go to bed and uh, i i think that it helps a ton personally and so again give it a try see what you what kind of effects you feel and go from there also, thanks to our sponsor, Epic Roll. Mad at Epic Roll is a black belt in jiu-jitsu, and he makes jiu-jitsu gear and apparel for jiu-jitsu practitioners. Uh, again, I really like his designs. Again, with Matt, just sharing this with you guys, he sent me a big old package years ago and basically said, no strings attached, just try this stuff. And if you like it, great, let's talk. If not, man, have at it. I really liked all the stuff. I like the t-shirts that he sent. I like the geese and the rash guards that he sent. And I like the rash guards in his shorts so, so much that we did a run of those uh, earlier this year. Um, or was it last year? Last year. It was last year, wasn't it? I think it's this year. It was this, this year, year, wasn't it? I feel okay. like, yeah. It was back yeah. in March, yeah. It was earlier this year. It's, guys, time seems to just... It just flies, whatever. man. Yeah. Oops. But um, we did we did a, a rash guard in shorts. Uh, with the jiu-jitsu logo and all that stuff and he did a great job with them and uh, we'll be doing probably another one towards the uh, like kind of like middle late into the year and so again if you guys want to check out any of his stuff that he has uh, i'm a big fan of his every everything he makes good quality stuff good uh good designs and uh again they're they they are also jujitsu approved you can check them out at uh that's we should put like a little stamp yeah a little stamp. Jiu -jitsu approved, Let's do right it. like a little stamp like boom there we go um you can check them out at epicrollbjj.com. That's the website. And then the promo code is jujitsu, and you'll save 15% off the order whenever you buy. Also, guys, if you want to join our Patreon, do so by going to patreon.com slash 
the jujitsu podcast gotta say that the jujitsu oh. podcast and you can get access to exclusive content that we have on our patreon which spans back multiple years we have a extra with every guest that we've ever had on the podcast we also have videos and narrated roles on the, the patreon and again it's listed for an affordable price so if you want to check it out support the podcast and get access to a lot of um, cool content go to patreon.com slash the jiu-jitsu podcast and if you would like to get three free ebooks for your jiu-jitsu game one on drilling one on your jiu-jitsu game plan and one on studying jiu-jitsu all right, guys, and you can get all of that by subscribing by going to jujitsu.net slash join J O I N and uh, become a subscriber. So, guys, with that said, let's jump into the podcast. All right, guys, so the idea that I want to share with you guys today is about what I consider or what I hear people say a lot of times is the number one rule that you need to uh, be good at jujitsu. And uh, I think the rule is either wrong slash at least incomplete. And uh, that rule basically is you just got to show up. That's all you got to do, right? Like people say, man, all you got to do is show up. You know, you wouldn't be a black belt someday. All you got to do is just show up. And of course that's true to a degree, right? That you do. Yeah. I mean, you can't, nothing starts with unless you show up. Right. But I want you to think about this. Have you ever worked with someone who just showed up to their job that, you know, that was just there, right? If you have, whether you're an employer or you've been an employee with another employee who just showed up, a lot of times that's not your favorite person to be working for you or to work with nope. because just showing up like they, it's like the bare minimum. I'm here. That's the best you get, right? I'm here versus someone who shows up and they're like ready to get after it or they have a very... Uh, they have more purpose to their work that they're that they're doing, right? They yeah. want to do a good job. Also, think about it this way: one of the things that'll waste more time and get you subpar results in the gym, like weightlifting, is to show up to the gym and not have a plan for what you're going to do that day, right? To just like show up in the weight room, and say, "All right, um, okay, what am I going to? I'll do a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and then you just kind of meander about." Opposed to, you know what? I've got my workout plan plan here. I'm going to do these six exercises and I'm going to do these reps. I'm going to, I'm going to do all this stuff. And uh, trust me, you'll get far more results from the latter than the former. And with jujitsu, this plays in um, 100%. You can just show up and showing up is fine, right? But you can get more from your training and you'll be better for it by showing up with intent. I did a video years ago talking about this where I have guys in the gym that train less but still progress faster than some of the people that train more than them. And it's not because they're like genetically gifted in some way or whatever. It's because when they show up in the gym, there's a purpose to why they're there. They're not just showing up. A lot of people think like a lot of people will guilt themselves into just showing up all the time, right? I've had people where they were like literally showing up every day. I've done it before, just showing up completely, like mentally, I'm, I'm just completely finished. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. But you know what I got to do? I got to show up. I got to show up because I got to, opposed to showing up and here's what I'm doing. And again, when I was talking about that, that I ruffled some feathers, I noticed that I got several replies from people that were telling me that like, Look, Chewy, I'm just, I have a long day at work and I got this going on. I got kids, da, 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 da. Sometimes showing up is the best I got and that at least helps me out, whatever. And that's fine. That's no problem. What I'm telling you is if you want to be good, if you want to be the best possible grappler that you can be, you can't just show up. Showing up is fine. And especially initially, you got to show up. But when you're ready to actually get good, and you're ready to take it to that next level. You got to show up with intent. You got to show up with an intention, a purpose for why you're there. Like what kind of techniques are you going to work on? Um, how hard do you plan to push yourself today? And it doesn't mean you have to go super hard. Like sometimes my intention when I train is after a really tough week, sometimes I'll have a day throughout the week. And this is usually almost every week, I'll have a day in the training where I'm actually purposely going to go light. I'm going to roll with people and I'm going to let them, I'm going to let them get good positions on me. And I'm going to work on surviving and escaping because I don't have the energy to put the, to really put that pepper into them and get after them. Right. I want to like settle back and be a little bit slower with my rolling. Um, or sometimes I even have the intention to go in and I'm going to drill technique and I'm not going to roll. Right. It's not about just killing yourself. I'm, what I'm saying intention, I'm not saying you got to get after it. Right. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is you got to know what are you trying to get out of this particular training session on some level? 
And again, for some people, especially if you're new, it could simply be, you know what I'm going to try to do? I'm going to try to finish all the rolls today. I'm going to try to roll every round I, instead of sitting one out. That could be part of it. Uh, when I came back last year after I had COVID, I remember uh, my uh, my breathing, my cardio was just not back to normal yet. I remember yeah. like coming back and I felt fine, but then I started rolling and I was like I way gassed really fast. And so then my intention for training was I am going to roll every other round. I'm going to roll one, take one out, roll one, take one out until I can get my cardio back. And I'm not going to push myself too, too hard. I'm going to play a lot more defensively and work on my defense so that I can basically save a little bit more energy, be a little bit more conservative. That was my intention. And so again, I think that some people misinterpreted like I was a lot of times, like when you're watching like the, like people talk on the internet, you're like watching these dudes and they're like sitting around like, listen here, if you don't get after it, you're a fucking pussy. You know, I actually, I, I, I saw a guy like this the other day. He was like sitting there smoking a cigar. He's like super jacked. And he's just telling you like, like if you don't get after it, then you're a bitch, you know? And I was like, okay, all right, cool. You yeah, know, like, that's not, I, I don't know if that's the, the I don't like, respond well to that stuff. But right, you know, I'm like, exactly, okay, exactly. So like, j just because you're jacked and you lift weights doesn't mean that like, you know what I mean? That doesn't give you license to tell everyone that's not will. You know, it, again, that's just my whole thing. That's my spiel on that. But no, it's like about just intention. What do you want to get out of this thing? Now, where it makes you better is because when you show up and you know what you're chasing and what you're trying to get after, this becomes really important with the development of techniques uh, and positions. Like when you become like focused on a particular technique or position or whatever it is very very important for progression and so if you want to get better jiu-jitsu you need to have intention now you don't have to show up to every single class with a hardcore intention some of them can be like hey i've had a rough day i just want to go train and just see what happens no problem but again if you get to those points where you're like man i really want to kick it up a notch i want to get better i'm getting ready for a competition i'm hitting a plateau i want to break through this whatever you got to show some intention and you got to choose a direction for your game you you think that um you brought up the point of some some of the uh, people at the gym training less. D would you even recommend sometimes that if people are just showing up, they're not really like focused, not training in a focused manner? Would you recommend like maybe, hey, why don't you decrease your training? Make it that way you're going to force yourself to be more intentional with your training because you're not going to be there every day. It, you're not going to feel like, well, I've just got all this time to screw around or just be on the mats. Like I have a limited time. I think for me, I know that I have a limited time. I have th two to three days a week. I have to make that shit count. If I don't, it's just like I'm not going to get better. You know, and I'm not, I don't think at, even as a black belt, like, I mean, there, there are, um, you know, ebbs and flows so your progression like some sometimes you're really improving on certain aspects and sometimes you're not um but like do you think taking some time off or not off like but maybe decrease the frequency is helpful yeah i mean i think that you know again everybody's going to have to it it depends on where you're at personally right you know how long have you been training how much can your body take um and recover from how young are you how old are you there's a lot of factors to 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 factor into it but what i would say is i think that sometimes people can overdo it because we kind of have this perception that more is better that more yeah. is always better and it's not always true right so for instance if you're going to the gym and you're like just so wiped out like you've you've trained three days in a row you get to the gym and you're like fatigued you're just like i'm here all right i'm here i've been training for you know like a bunch of hours all right i'm doing this would you get better training if you allowed yourself a day of rest and then you came back tomorrow and you were recovered and you were like excited you were energetic you were mentally focused i would say that yeah you probably have better training and you'd probably be better for it um, we a lot of times don't, we're so concerned with quantity of training that we don't really respect the quality aspect. Like how good is that training that we just did, right? Like, I mean, did you get after your drilling? Did you get after your rolling? Did you, did you really feel like you got something out of it versus you just kind of went through the motions, right? Um, again, we can think about how, how we are as people, like how good do you do things when you're exhausted? Right? How well, how good of a father are you when you're ex absolutely exhausted? How yeah. good of a husband are you? How how good are you at just doing anything that you normally do when you're exhausted? Probably not great. And so there's a there's a thing there, right? Taking a little bit of time to rest and recover can be good. Um, and for some people that maybe don't have the ability to train as much, like a lot of times people that are super busy, then it's another good point. Like if you put a little bit of focus, you can extract a lot more from that training 
than you could if you just sort of show up and don't really have any intention to your training or any sort of goal or purpose for what you're trying to get out of it. Yeah. Um, but again, as far as like whether or not you should take the time off, that depends on every person. But I think that it should something be something you at least play around with. Because a lot of times we're resistant to these things, but I can tell you from even from my experience, even back in my, I started playing around with more rest days in my like early thirties. Like, and I remember, you know, I could, I could have done more, but I felt better. Like I could sit, I can constantly train with almost like no breaks, no injuries or anything. As long as I incorporated rest in more often, right. I was able to train more. I didn't have injuries. I wasn't so exhausted. Um, and, and on the off days, I would still probably lift or I'd go for like a nice long walk throughout it or i would do something but i just wouldn't train jiu-jitsu but i noticed that incorporating those rest days and taking a little bit of time off from time to time was very useful yeah i think you plan i mean when you don't come in every day you have to plan your training a little better and that doesn't mean like you can still have intention outside of the gym like i'm looking at techniques like i'm looking at instructionals and i'm figuring that out like oh i want to take this next time i'm in the i'm in the gym you know, we're going to work technique and stuff, but I also have other things that I want to bring into it. So I know, you know, what I want to add in or what I want to start to implement during, during uh, drilling or, or even like, like rounds. So I think like, if you're someone that doesn't come in as much, I, you have to try to plan. And in, even if you want to keep your mind on jujitsu, not physically be there, but still mm -hmm. mentally be there. I think it's okay to do a little studying. Like some, some guys like, like Brandon McCatherine, he says he studies uh, you know he's on he's on the mats all the time but it's his full-time job but he also studies like every day so if you want to keep your mind kind of on an intention in jujitsu go through an instructional and just kind of like work through it gradually and i think that you're still keeping your mind on jujitsu and on your intentions so that way you can implement those things and you start to train you know when you're on the mats Sure. And if you're newer, I would probably tell you to maybe not so much with the instructionals, if, if it's something, you know, maybe, but like yeah. Yeah. watch some matches, like in the, watch the matches, watch some rules. And why do you do that? Because you get a better idea implicitly of what's going on in, in the hierarchy of grappling, for yeah. instance, with like, let, let's say, for instance, if you've got two people, one person, um, let's say you've got two people and you plan to teach them football, American football. Um, I want to make that distinction so the soccer fans don't get angry. So American football, <laughs> you're going to teach American football. One person has no idea how to play American football. He's never played it, doesn't know how it works, doesn't know the rules. He just knows there's a bunch of dudes in pads crashing into each other. Yep. Person, person B loves the sport. They watch it all the time. They know all the rules. They have favorite players, everything else. If I have to teach either one of these people how to play football, which one's going to be easier? The guy that has already has a base of information and understanding as to how it works. He understands the whole point of it. And by watching a lot of times rolling in matches, you'll see trends. And whether you know it or not, you will implicitly pick up ideas as to how the whole thing works. You'll understand kind of the hierarchy of the positions and which ones are more important versus other ones, where you want to be versus other ones. And it helps give you a good framework so that then you can add the other techniques and positions into it. For instance, when I started training, I had been watching grappling and you know MMA fights and in jiu-jitsu matches and stuff like that for a couple of years. So when I got into jiu-jitsu, it really wasn't that bad because I was already so inundated with it from watching it so much that basically I was like the guy who watched tons of football and then learned how to play it. Yeah. Like on the flip side, I actually never really watched American football as a kid. And so then when I started playing football in high school, it was a hell of a lot of stuff I had to learn. I didn't know how the game really worked. I, yeah. I mean, I remember there were guys with pads and there's a ball floating around, but like I didn't understand how it worked. I didn't know the difference between a lot of stuff. And it was uh, <laughs> it was like what people say, drinking through a fire hose. It was like drinking through a fire hose for me for football. I remember I had to like go home and study all the plays and stuff and yeah. figure out how it works because I was so overwhelmed by it. Uh, whereas jiu-jitsu, I was like, oh, this is this makes sense. I already watched this all the time. I know how this works. You knew the um, rules. You knew the intention. You knew the, the purpose, the goals. Yeah. And um, I do think that, you know, there's two things if you're a newer grappler to watching matches. I think sometimes you can miss some of the subtleties. You get the main ideas. You'll miss some of the subtleties. But sure. also, if you pay attention, if you pay attention to what they're doing and you're like, I don't know what to learn or what to, you know, look at what the highest level grapplers are doing. Mm -hmm. And that'll give you an idea on like, oh, this crazy move that you saw on YouTube, is it any good? Well, is it being used at all at the highest level? And if it's not, it's probably not an, as an effective technique. Right. Well, because and that's that's the one of the reasons why as jiu-jitsu practitioners, why we 
why a lot of times why a lot of people poo poo in competitions, but it's one of the reasons why competitions are held in kind of a certain place with us is because even if it is unrealistic to say a street fight or something, the idea of like two people going at each other a hundred percent that's real and it's very realistic in that sense and you know if it's not if it's not effective it's not going to be shown in a competition it's just as simple as that yep. um and you can even watch like jiu-jitsu like uh use in uh mma you know it's very it's because it's, it's the same stuff it's just a simpler version of it yeah um a lot of times but it's the same basic ideas you're trying to get to mount pass a guard get to mount side control you know back mount you're trying to like sweep the person or you know spin. it's the same stuff just we got punches involved so it can still be helpful as well yeah um and there was a point that I was going to make that you were talking about, like, cause you're talking about new grapplers and saying, Oh yeah, I was also going to say this. Here's another thing to consider. There is value. Just like taking a rest day. There's a value in just getting away from everything. Like people say like, Oh, like on my off days, I'm going to study and stuff like that. You can, there's nothing wrong with that if you enjoy it, but don't force yourself to like, if you don't want to say, go, go do something else. Just get your mind off of it. There's a lot of value in stepping away from everything that you're normally doing and sort of clearing your head. Uh, this is why we sleep on it, right? We kind of mm -hmm. sleep on something or, yeah. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to go take a walk. I'm going to go take a drive. I'll come back later and, and, you know, we'll settle this out or whatever, you know, you get distance from it and that can be a, a useful thing. One of the things that I found in my, my own life is that anytime I have a break for like a week or something like that from training, and I'm not able to do my, my work and stuff for the business. When I come back from those kinds of things, I like my production, my improvement, everything shoots up because it's like, I'm so excited to be back and I'm rest, I'm refreshed, I'm rested, I'm ready to go. And so I always notice these jumps uh, in my productivity in the business. And I also notice a jump in my progress and training a lot of times when I come back uh, from a little bit of a vacation. So there's that too. Yeah. The focus on the efficiency, right? You're more focused, you're more efficient. You're not like, there's no wasted, there's not as much waste of time or waste of movement or wasted concentration. Um, yeah, like, like they were talking about, we, we talked about that book, um, Grit, and they talk about deliberate practice in there and, and how it's mentally, like deliberate practice is both mentally and physically taxing mm -hmm. and you can only do it for short bursts. As, you know, so don't like wear yourself out, try to like continue to learn new, new things. You gotta have a, some small section that you kind of practice and then implement it or go do something else, like you said. But like it, it is exhausting. Like so, if you're constantly grinding, like we talk about the grind, mm -hmm. uh, I think it can get a little bit to where it, it's just you lose focus. I think because you're just supposed to be. I'm supposed to be showing up to the gym all the time and training, but I'm not, you know, getting any better. Well, possibly because you're not really, you don't really have, like you said, you don't have a plan. You're just kind of there. That yep. can be hard. In uh, in Eric Anderson, uh, his book. Uh, I forgot, I can't remember the name offhand, but um, again, he he was one of the guys that helped sort of like do some of that research that the idea of deliberate practice is based on. Yeah. Um, and he was talking about swimmers and they noticed there was a trend with swimmers where these swimmers are doing laps, right? They're just doing laps in a pool. One sort of, you know, a, a handful of movements over and over and over again. They said that they found that they did these questionnaires with them. They found that the swimmers that were good, you know, the, the ones that were pretty good, when they would swim, they would just kind of go through the motions. They were like, they were like, they were swimming, doing their laps, you know, doing their, their movements. And they were thinking about like, man, what, like, what am I going to do for lunch? Or just thinking about whatever that might be kind of distracting. Yeah. On the flip side, the swimmers that were really good, they were focused on, how the movement felt the entire time they were basically trying to find that perfect stroke or that perfect movement that they're doing in the water and try to replicate that as many times as they could and they were being in tune with whether or not their movements were off slightly and again seemingly the same thing they both showed up but one had more purpose and intention in what they were doing and it made a big difference and so again that's another idea for you again those guys are it's just another example of this at play yeah i think uh that's something more like they're being present in the moment and i think that's something that if people meditate or kind of focus on being present i think that's something can if you don't allow your mind to wander I, I, you can have more success with that um but that's well, practice right well right it does and what i'm saying is like if you're going to show up you could say listen i'm going to do my drills and i'm going to be focused on my movements that's my intention today yeah. right i'm going to be focused on focusing on my movements rather than like 
thinking about lunch as I'm right. doing my my guard passes or something like that or whatever movement it is. Yeah. But you are right. A lot of people don't be, and this has happened from like phones and stuff like that, yeah, you know, people's attention I get that shit too. People's attention spans have been destroyed. Um, you know, like the the video content keeps getting shorter and shorter and shorter it does. Uh, because people just can't sit there and like just watch something, right? They're just constantly bouncing around. Um, one of the things that could be useful in that situation, if you are one of those people that has trouble focusing, if you have trouble um, focusing, you have trouble keeping your attention focused on something, um, I would encourage you to do a uh, information diet. Uh, this is something I do regularly. This means stop consuming all the information that you're consuming and just this this doesn't even just mean information this is like this could even mean music like for instance during these periods i'll listen to music that doesn't have words i don't want to hear other people's words uh if i listen to music at all i'm not going to read any books i'm not going to watch youtube video lectures and audiobooks which is something i love doing i'll typically during these periods i will delete um social media off my phone so i can't use it and then i just be in my own head for a little while and again it seems kind of weird but when you come back from that it helps kind of like reset your brain a little bit um so that when you like for instance like when i i have the apps um on uh, social media stuff on my phone again now but like i did this little detox for a while and when i added them back in i i broke the pattern of wanting to click on them so i have assigned times that i use them for business and stuff like that and messaging people but otherwise i don't even care i don't look at them um, you know what I mean? And it could be a really good idea for some of you guys if you have trouble with it. If you don't have trouble with it, then whatever. But if yeah. you have trouble with it, if you find yourself scrolling endlessly sometimes, it's a good idea. Like go on a little detox, go on an information diet, and then come back to it later. How long do you think is helpful to do that? Like if you if you do that yourself, what do you feel like benefits you? A week, a couple week, days? Two, week, week, two weeks, something like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, the difficult thing with like the social media stuff is like we do a lot of business. We do a lot of work on social media. We yeah, post, you can use your you computer. Know? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, because I can get on my computer. I can use all the stuff that I do on my computer, right? Like, I can get on Instagram. Yeah. I can get on, say, Facebook on my computer. I don't need it on my phone. Like, I mean, nothing's going to happen on Facebook or Instagram that is so pressing that I have to be there right now and to deal with it, right? Nothing is. No, nothing's so important. Yeah. Um, it, it's one of these things where I think people sometimes we we kid ourselves with the uh, addictive properties of social media. And we don't really, we don't actually, like, it, we're in denial about it. You know what I mean? Because you you watch people, bro. Like, pew, people just do this scrolling thing endlessly. It's nonsense. It's crazy. Um, and it reminds me of coffee. Like, coffee is such a, we, it's a drug. Caffeine is a drug, right? Whether you want to consider it a drug or not, it's a, it's a drug. It's a psychoactive drug. It's a powerful drug. And it's the most widely distributed drug. And it's very... Uh, normalized in society it's, it's like considered to be completely benign which it's not it has effects to your body yeah. um, but it's just considered to be it's okay you know no big deal but i think a lot of people don't really respect what it does for them like for instance i had a conversation with a guy and he was like i was like telling him, i was like oh you're addicted to coffee he goes, no, no, I'm not addicted to coffee. I just really like the taste. I was like, no, bro. I was like, you're, you're totally addicted to coffee. He's like, he goes, no, bro. He's like, I just like having a few cups. To, and I was like, I was like, here's my, here's my test to you. Don't drink over here because he said he really liked the taste. I was like, drink decaf for a week. Yeah. I was like, drink decaf for a week. It, it tastes like coffee. Like I, sure. I mean, cause sometimes like I do, sometimes I will have a, a cup of decaf, like in like maybe around like noon. Yeah. Um, I, cause I don't want to, I don't have any caffeine past noon, but sometimes I'll have like a cup of decaf because yeah. I do like the actual taste of coffee when I have like a smoothie or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I might mix those two together. Um, I have like a, a cup of call, like a cup of like warm decaf with my like cold smoothie. That's so, a, that's a weird combo, but, but I've noticed you do that though. You well, do. I love I, my favorite. It's it just would laugh at me. My favorite thing in the world is I love making a big smoothie and then I'll have like a cup of coffee with it. And I love like having hot cold, the hot and cold, the bitter and the sweet. It's like, huh. it's perfect. Cause it's like, you know, people I've get... never put that together where you, I remember we were in like, we were in Denver. Colorado and yeah, went, yeah, yeah. like to the little smoothie place. Yeah. And then, uh, and you had a coffee and I was like, and you were like drinking one. See, I would uh -huh. like drink one yeah, yeah, and then I drink the forth. other and you're like double fisting. I was like, yeah. That's a, that's a chewy thing. That's a chewyism. Like think about like um <laughs> you, you know people go to like people go to like uh, when they go to a coffee shop they might get some sweet like little scone or something right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want scones. It just has no nutritional value. But I can get like a smoothie with protein and some like some stuff in there, and it's going to be better yeah, for me. Yeah. And it still gives me that sweet to go with that the, the coffee. And I drink coffee black, so it's kind of it's it, it's just nice. I like it. But anyway, yeah. So I was like told him I was like drink drink it drink it decaf for a week. See how you feel. 
you know, and see whatever. And, uh, you know, I sent him a message later. I was like, Hey bro. I was like, uh, did you make it a week? He's like, no, you know, like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, it, it, it's not because it's like, look, I drink coffee every morning as well, but I do these periods every now and then where I'll like get off of it for a couple of weeks and then add it back in. And it's yep. merely just to show it's up for my own head. I want to have control over it. And also I want to know, like, what is it doing to me? You know, like, what is it yep. doing? Like, for instance, like I, I remember hearing about the idea of a half life and a quarter life of caffeine and that you shouldn't, if you're trying to get to sleep around like midnight or a little bit before you shouldn't drink coffee after 12 uh, noon, right? And I was like, hey, there's no way it's affecting me that bad, right? But I noticed when I was going through my little bout of insomnia uh, some months ago that like one of the things that really helped out was keeping my, was containing my caffeine intake earlier in the day. And then later on, like I slept great. I sleep way better. Like I've had some of the best sleep in my life that I've like since I was a kid. You remember when you were a kid and you could just fall asleep for like like 20 hours, no problem. Yeah. Like now it's like, you know, then you get older and you're like, shit, like I got like you wake up and you you're just up and it's like yeah. only been five hours. Yeah. I've been having some of the best sleep I've had in years, bro. And again, one of the things that I did was make sure that my caffeine intake was it keeps it's it's in its spot. Also, when you when you know what it does to you, you have that time away. Sometimes you can use a little bit less and get more from it. Correct. Because yeah. because a lot of times what what happens with people is they use caffeine, and they use so much of it that it disrupts their sleep. It disrupts all these other functions, and then they have to use a, a bunch of it the next day just to stay normal. Whereas right. like if you kind of clean out a little bit and you add it back in, you can have a little bit less of it and get a, a far more like uh, noticeable effect. And while you while it clears out of your system, you might sleep a little bit better, and then you don't need as much. You know yeah. what I mean? Because if you're well rested, you don't need a ton of caffeine to stay up. Yeah. But um, but yeah, it's like one of those things where I think that a lot of people getting back to what I was talking about, a lot of people are far more addicted to social media than they want. They would they would like to admit because it doesn't make sense to us. Right. It's not a substance or whatever. But again, these companies, these massively large companies are using like scan brain scans and stuff to yeah. figure out like what makes us tick. What do we want to look at? Algorithms galore. And then they they suck us in, you know. Right. And so again, you've got to be very careful with it. And so if you have that problem where you notice, like if you go in your screen time, if you look on your screen time and you've noticed, like, bro, I've been on this damn thing for two hours today um on social media, and you don't, you're not making money off of it, right? Like just cut that stuff out for a couple of weeks and again give it its rightful place check it for like 20 minutes or 30 minutes or something if you want to a day you don't need to be on that thing for hours it's a waste of time yeah i think uh those type of things are deceiving um just because like i i walked out of the house without drinking coffee like i was mm -hmm. i um i was running a little late out the door yeah had to get out and i was like man i'm having a hard time like really like i didn't feel sharp i felt mm -hmm. like kind of sleepy mm -hmm. but i also felt kind of like i wasn't awake and i was like damn that's a wake-up call for me like yeah, honestly yeah, that's yeah. like a like oh okay this is what it's doing I, i've got my body so acclimated to this thing like um we had uh oh man i can't think of the guy's name who's on the podcast he does a lot of like the research strength conditioning and stuff galpin uh, yes andy galpin he was talking about like coffee use right mm -hmm. and he was saying see we're off the rails now yeah. he's talking about coffee use and he's like you should never use coffee to help you wake up yeah. Like it should, you should use the natural hormones in your body mm -hmm. and the rhythm, rhythm of your body to wake up. You should never, if you're relying on a substance to help you stay alert and wake up, then something's off. Yep. So, and, and that's, you know, that's just the thing. Like, I think we get lulled into these patterns and we don't realize like, oh shit, you might be on social media and you realize oh, I've been on this for an hour and a half scrolling. You kind of mm -hmm. get sucked into it. Right. And you're right. Like it, you may need to go on a jujitsu diet for a little bit. You may need to go on a, on a social media diet. Um, I, cause I think you're, you know, we get so much stimulus over and over and so fast that it just mm -hmm. makes it really tough to, to even focus and concentrate on something. Sure. So it's like we learn a technique and then we want to go on to the next one. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. We never spend uh, enough time to really feel like we, we've, and I don't know if we really master anything. I don't know if we ever master it relative to our other stuff. Yeah. You can get very good at, at certain stuff, but um, Chewy, I wanted to ask you this: when you got some of those responses on your on your email, like mm -hmm. people that were kind of giving you excuses or mm -hmm. giving you reasons or whatever, mm -hmm. saying they, they they just can only get there and that's the best they can do, mm -hmm. what do you tell them? What do you say, or how do you get there and change their perspective? I'm not going to try to change their perspective. I'm like, you do what you want to do, right? Because again, I can't. 
Well, maybe a student. Think about maybe a student of yours. As you see well, them well, kind of not progressing. What about that? Well, the thing is, is, is like what I'm, where I'm getting at is I'm not going to try to like force them to change. What I'll say to them is like, okay, you keep doing whatever you're doing. But if you run into a problem like this, give this a try. Try it. Can't hurt to try it. And if you try it, you might find that the results are pretty good. Just mm -hmm. saying, right? Um, you know, like for instance, with uh, one of the guys at the gym right now, um, he's lost a ton of weight. Uh, he, he, so basically, uh, the guy that I use for nutrition as a coach, <laughs> he's gotten a lot of business off me because I've had really good results with it. Right. Yeah. And basically that's eating with intention. It's really what it comes down to. Basically I'm, I know I'm eating, I'm eating certain meals at certain times of the day to get certain effects from it. If I'm lifting weights, I eat different, I eat slightly different foods. If I'm not lifting weights, slightly different foods, but there's an, there's a purpose for the food. Now, some people could be, Oh, that's just too much work or whatever da, 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 da. it might be but at the same time for me i found it amazing because one it's actually creates less work because i know exactly what i'm going to eat every single day aside from the days where i get to like have a cheat meal you know uh, yeah. or, or re, as we call it a free meal get to just eat whatever i want and it's also nice because i feel really good all the time i don't feel lethargic and sleepy i don't need a midday nap because i eat like some crappy food at like some restaurant that i feel like sleepy and like overly stuffed from um, my waistline looks better you know when it wanted to i was bulking up for a little bit and i was getting a little heavier and now i'm coming back down i'm back down about 204 and so you know I'm starting to get a little more trim and it's very easy to do so simply just tweak stuff just a little bit and one of the guys in the gym is doing that too he's like you know man like you know, he's tried a lot of different stuff. And so he's like, man, I'll just hire this guy, Chewy hired and give it a try. And all of a sudden he's down like 40 pounds, you know, it's like, it's great. Guy's like mm -hmm. almost 50 years old yep. and he's, he's lost 40 pounds. And he's like, this is the, he's like, it's so easy. He's like, it, it's like, it's ridiculous that he's like, I'm, I'm eating more food than I ever have ever eaten before. He's like, some days I can't even eat the food that's prescribed because I'm so yeah. stuffed yeah. and I'm losing weight. Right. Yeah. Well, it's great because we're eating with, we have purpose. Yeah. And, I, and so again, it's just a powerful thing. And so, um, you know, so for people that like, again, when they were resistant to the idea, it's fine to be resistant to it. It's okay. But, you know, if you want to get good at the stuff, or if you want to push yourself a little bit more, if you want to become the best you can be at this, I'm going to not be the next Chewy, not be the next Hodger Gracie, just be the best you just try it on and see how it works. Yeah. Is there like, um, how think of maybe like a newer grappler or somebody that's mm -hmm. just like, you know, getting into it and trying to figure this out. You're making like goals, right? I mean, part of it's like, what do you want to, what technique are you learning? You're making goals. Mm -hmm. And then like, what are your landmarks? Are you trying to get certain landmarks? Like when is it time to move on as well? Like, so when is it time to say, all right, I think I've gotten what I'm going to get to. I mean, if you're a white belt and you're learning a certain technique, well, you're probably gonna have a hard time hitting it on blue belts and purple belts and stuff. Is there sure. like, where do you say, all right, I think I've got what I want off this technique. Now I'm going to build on to it or go a different route. Well, it's never really easy to say when we're talking about an art form, right? It's kind of sure. hard to say that. Like, here's an idea. When I was a white belt, I remember I was getting I was getting guard, my guard passed. And I remember when people would pass my guard, I would push against them and I would get really frustrated. And I would have this situation where I'd give up. I would literally, my arms would be tired. I would be frustrated and I would just roll over and let the person like pass my guard and I would give up and just tap out pretty quickly. I hated doing that because I knew I was giving up. I hated doing that. So mm. I set an intention that I was like, you know, when I'm going to train today, I know this is going to happen. I'm going to have this like this little battle in my head of where I want to give up and I've got to be ready for it. And I've got to like basically tell myself, no, we're not giving up and push. And even if I get submitted, I can't give up. And so I went into the gym and, you know, made that my goal. I was like, when, when someone was passing my guard, I was like, I'm just not going to give up. I'm going to fight as hard as I can. I'm not going to give up. And so that was an intention. That was a good thing for me as a white belt, right? It has nothing to do with the technique. It literally has to do with me just not giving up. Um, yeah. You know, that's it. But as far as like when to change from one thing to the other, I get this question sometimes too. There is no like, this is, this is jujitsu. This is an art form. There's no paint and paint by the numbers, like X, you know, linear, do this, do that. It's not a video game where you get like a quest by quest by quest, yeah. you know? So it really comes down to you, but a really good rule of thumb is when it stops working, do something else, you know? So basically if you start working on a technique, stops working, change it, do something else, either try a new setup or add a new technique to the end of it to change together with something, try something else, try a different way of doing it. Um, also, depending on you, if you get bored, do something else. You know, if you start getting bored and you're like, man, I've been doing this a whole bunch and I just feel like I'm doing the same old stuff over and over again, 
let me try something else um, and just go in a direction that would be interesting to you. Uh, and last is if you hear, hit a skill plateau, if you notice that you feel like you're not getting any better and everybody seems to be passing you up and all the people that you were submitting like three weeks ago are now submitting you, it's probably a good idea to change things up and play a different game. You know, so again, those are three ideas, sort of three relative sort of points that you can consider. But as far as landmarks go, I, there's no, I'm not really looking for any particular landmark. Most people know when they're making progress, right? Like you start, you, you, you go into the gym and you start training with people and you kind of know where your place is on the pecking order. And when you start climbing up the pecking order, you know that you're improving. Um, you start doing techniques and they feel smoother and less cumbersome to you. And you're able to do them with less uh, struggle. You know, you're getting better. And so again, just look for that. You don't have to have like a specific thing that you're looking for because we're all doing different stuff and people were working on different things. And so it'd be hard to give like a specific, this is what you're after. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another, another side of it is like what I did was, you know, delving into leg locks a little more. I started on my defense first. Like, mm -hmm. honestly, I started just like getting into entanglements and getting better at defense. I was like, all right, I'm getting there. Now I can do something. I feel like I'm not getting caught as much. I'm getting out. I'm able to you know, get in a better position. Now I can start moving into attacking mm -hmm. or my own entries, right? So that for me was like, that's how I started the whole leg lock thing because I was actually forced, you know, because guys were working it. Uh, at, at our 6 a.m. class and they were putting it putting you know that position it was in my face and I had to learn it and so it was almost like a trial by fire to figure it out and then once I got a little better at that then I was able to start you know doing my own entries and doing things like that so um yeah even delving into defense could be a, a cool way to uh maybe get a better better grasp of a position or or a, or a move sure Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, well, if you know your defense lacks, it's a great place to go. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, like, for instance, like if you have a fear of a particular position because you don't feel like you're very skilled there, like if you're like, I hate being in the bottom of side control because I can't escape or because people submit me there. It's probably a good idea to go there because it's probably got some good lessons to be learned by forcing yourself to play from the position. Right. If you if you find that there's a resistance there, like you're you're resisting a, a position or a technique, maybe it's a good idea for you to to look into it and see what see what the deal is. Yeah. Most of the time, when you have like a nervousness or fear and anxiety or whatever about a particular position, usually that's a great place to look to for growth. Mm. Great point. All right, guys. So that is the podcast today. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully, you got something from it. Um, you know, we stuck. I think we stuck to stuck to it pretty well. We went on a couple quick tangents. Like well, we were talking about caffeine and stuff like that. But I think we were, <laughs> you know. Um, and, and by the way, guys, if you're a coffee drinker, I'm a coffee drinker too. So Love don't coffee. like, um, you know. Again, just I, I just say that because, again, I've had so many of my students come into the gym, and I've. Uh, I've helped them out by getting them to drink less of it or even like with energy drinks or like stuff like oh, energy workout. drinks. Yeah. But I've gotten them to take in less and like, they're like, man, I feel better training. I'm like, great. You know, anyway, um, we're not going to get, we're not going to subjects done. Don't want to beat the dead horse. That's right. But, uh, hopefully you guys enjoy Hopefully you got something from it today. As always, our sponsors, guys, if you want to check them out, charlottesweb.com, you can check them out and get 20% off the order. So get yourself some CBD, try it out. Um, I encourage people to give it a try for about a month to see what kind of effects you have to, to make to see if it's noticeable. You know, again, trying a supplement once, there's not really going to be much from it. It's like getting on a diet. You get on a diet for a day, probably yeah. not. You're not going to notice any difference. Nothing's going to change. You get on a diet for a month, four weeks, you can notice some serious differences. And so I encourage you, if you go uh, to Charles Webb's website, charlesweb.com, uh, promo code is jujitsu20. You get 20% off the order. Grab a tincture, grab a pack of gummies, whatever it is that you'd like to try. Take them, use them for a month, see what you think, and kind of go from there. Also, thanks to Epic Roll for helping make the podcast happen. You can check them out if you're looking to get some gear for your uh, self or for someone else or some some apparel like t-shirts shorts whatever check out epic roll bjj.com the promo code is jujitsu for 15 percent off the order you can also support the podcast by going to patreon.com slash the jujitsu podcast by doing that you'll get access to several years worth of content we have a guest spot with each one of the guests that we've ever had on the podcast uh, you flex it on me right here, bro. bro. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we get the uh, you get a guest spot. We, we have a guest spot where we do with every single guest we've had on the podcast. We have narrated roles that are in there from like, my training, things like that. Um, and we have a bunch of different other stuff that we've recorded for people to enjoy if they want to. You can check it out again by going to patreon.com slash the jujitsu podcast. And uh, that's it. So check it out. Also, if you guys want to become a Chew Crew subscriber by joining my email. 
uh, group. You can do so by going to chujitsu.net slash join, J-O-I-N. Today, I don't know why, guys, I've been having trouble with the word that I say probably more than any other word, chujitsu. I don't know why. it's been. I keep wanting to say chujitsu. I sound like everybody's grandparents when they say jujitsu. I know. I know. Well, people weird. can't say it. It's weird. Maybe I have. I now have a little bit more sympathy and empath- actually not sympathy, but empathy uh, for go. them. I'm like, hey, like I understand. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes words are hard. But yes. uh, if you guys want to check it out, you can get you'll get three free eBooks for joining, uh, and then I send out a daily email. If you decide that you do no longer want to get the daily email, no sweat. You can unsubscribe at any time, and you can keep the eBooks for yourself. And guys, with all that said, thank you so much for being with us this week. We'll talk to you next time.